Dr. Dean says to you that you're going to win or I'm going to fire in three years? Or was that, did I hear that from Dr. Dean? What, what was the case? Do you remember that? Yeah, it, it, was, it was very realistic. Yes. The statement was never made. Yeah. Yeah, that, well. That's a, that's a figment of his imagination. That's, that, that's, a, that's a criticism? He said that, uh, he said, after this after I signed the contract, he said, one thing I got to tell you, he said, I'm going to help you all I can, give you everything you need within reason, but if you're not at 503 years, I'm going to have to let you go. That's he what said, I said. He said, I want results. I mean, he made it quite clear that, I mean, this wasn't, as long as you don't get complaints from parents, it wasn't this. He wanted results on the scoreboard. And uh, and that's, I mean, actually, that's the way I might have interpreted it. He might not have said it like that, but I kind of got the idea that three years, we better we better show some main progress here or uh, we might be looking again. But uh, that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted that kind of thing. And I mean... He was never unrealistic in any, in any expectation. I mean, he had high expectations, but they were realistic. All right, Dr. Spiker, talk about the um, talk about what was attractive about having Chris being the football coach. What attracted you? You, you said there was five candidates. They all came in for interviews. What uh, what was the difference maker? Well, they were all winners. Uh, they all had. Uh, uh, success. If I would mention the names, you would know them all. But uh, what we felt Chris brought to us was that he was on his way up in the coaching profession. A lot of the others had already been there, done that. So we felt that he would work harder. He would surround himself with the right people. And that he had more potential to impact our young people and to bring a different kind of experience to our Penn High School students. Now, I want you to fast forward past that first five and five year years at 500. Next thing you know, unbeaten team. I mean, then all of a sudden after year two, it's like, wow, I've got the diamond in the rough that we always dreamed of. Take it from there. Well, you know, uh, a lot of people thought that, uh, you know, he might move on to uh, an, another uh, high school opportunity or he might decide to go be an assistant uh, at the college level and so on. And I always told those people, I said, well, that's a possibility. Uh, but I said, uh, that's not how I'm reading uh, what his interests are because uh, he and Jane had bought a building trades house. Uh, I think uh, Tim came along in there someplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were pretty much settling into the community uh, as an integral part of the community. And uh, uh, he was having success. He was developing players. Uh, what I always tell everybody is that Penn High School never had the greatest athletes. They had good athletes and they had some great athletes, but they never had 10 of them at one time or 20 of them at one time. They had what I call program kids. They had kids who came through the middle school program, who came into the high school, paid their dues and worked hard, got excellent coaching, had supportive parents. They were program kids. Penn's record over these many years is because there was a solid program that had integrity. And you know, if you were a, a, a sophomore, junior, senior, you worked hard, you knew that you were going to get on the field. One of the things <clears throat> that also that attracted us to uh, uh, Chris was that he was going to two platoon that he was going to involve a lot of students in the program. And that's what we were looking for is, uh, you know, you, you get as many students involved in a program as you can and you give them excellent instruction. Um, 
Chris had a reputation as an excellent teacher. My philosophy today, <clears throat> I still look for people that are excellent teachers because if you have an excellent teacher, you're going to end up with an excellent coach because coaching is nothing more than teaching. And, uh, you know, when you're a head coach, you have to have leadership because you have to bring all your different assistants together that uh, bring different kinds of experiences and different personalities and everything else. But uh, um, good teaching, excellent teaching, translates into excellent coaching, trans translates into a, a strong program, and uh, Penn's success over these many years is because of great leadership uh, on the part of the coaching staff. Uh, they've had good administrative support by and large through this whole period of time. And uh, so, you know, I didn't quite honestly expect Chris to be there as long as he was uh, because I thought there might be other opportunities. I know there were other opportunities that came along, but uh, uh, he chose to build a dynasty uh, at Penn High School, which he did. All right, I'm going to lighten the load here. Okay. Chris, what's your funniest Dean Spiker story that we can share? <laughs> that we can share now. Uh, well, the <laughs> the one, I, I don't know if I you know three of them that you've told me. I don't know if about. he quite remembers this. Like I did. We talked about this last night. But uh, my first, <laughs> the first three games I coached in the state, very interesting. And number one, and we went down to Mishawaka, and we had to come out. The hands and the young, young middle school kids were spitting on us, and the band was playing. Old McDonald had a farm. They had farm day there. <laughs> and uh, it was a little different environment, and then that's where... Everybody thought Charlie was me. He ran through his clipboard up above the lights and jumped in the pile, and I was picking up the paper. They thought I was an overage manager, and Charlie was Giesman. But anyway, so anyway, I told our kid, I said, we're going to score tonight. I said, in this game, we're going to play them close. I said, I don't know if we're going to win the game, but I'm going to guarantee you we're going to be in it. And get the crowd into it. You score a test and run over and hold the ball up to the crowd. Well, we did that. We had an official came over and said, I don't know if that's we did things in the high, but we don't do it that way in Indiana. If, if you don't give me the ball and I call for it, it's going to be a 15 year penalty. So, 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 so I told him, No more, that's done. Well, we score again, and uh, Zimmer does the same thing. He starts to, and he realizes it, and he kind of throws the ball on the ground. Well, Tansy, oh, Scratch, don't mention the official's name on that. Scratch that out when we do. And uh, the official calls Paul, and when he didn't get it, he was reaching his pocket for a handkerchief. And Rob Lovett, who currently works at Penn High School, he saw what was happening, so he grabbed the ball and threw it to the official, and the official couldn't get his hands out of his pocket fast enough. He hit him in the nose. He turned me into turned me into the state that uh, he was thinking that I told the team to try to hit him in the face with the football, which was true. Anyway, con contacted Dean, so what's your new coach doing up there and everything. So he calls me, Lola Whitworth, the aforementioned Lola Whitworth come down, so we have a sub for you, Dr. Spiker would like to see you. Oh, okay. Well, that was it, you know, and I explained the situation. She says, well, this is not going to happen. Oh, no, it won't happen again. So the uh, next week, week uh, as he said, Charlie was exuberant like this. My kids on the helmets and get their attention. And and I had a parent tell me, I like the way you guys do things. They used to be able to get away with making mistakes and nobody say anything. And he said, you guys get right in their face and you don't tolerate mistakes. I like that. Well, that's what he really meant. I liked it when you did it somebody else's kid, not mine. Well, his kid got reprimanded by Charlie, and uh, he was there waiting to see Dr. Spiker Monday morning, Reggie's complaint. I'm called, called again. <laughs> I thought you said, that. well, it won't happen again, I'll guarantee you. Well, then the next 
next week we had uh, uh, a, a little problem with our programs, our home opener, and we had all our senior, we had somebody that left the program, and uh, we really didn't want him identified, and uh, anyway, while I was doing it, he took care of it in his own way, and, uh, but again, people took exception to it. Third straight week, I'm called, <laughs> I'm called in, what's going on there? And I, and I finally, we got that straightened around, I went back, told Charlie, I said, I don't know if we're going to make it here. I mean, it's a, uh, this is uh, different. I mean, uh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Well, anyway, then things got much, much, much better, and then we started winning, and uh, winning covers a lot of hills. Like, there's no such thing as a bad basketball shot if it goes in. Well, we started winning games, and uh, people started, you know, tolerating us. <laughs> Dr. Dean, you want to comment on those? <laughs> he doesn't remember. <laughs> you don't remember any of those? Well, I remember the uh, program one. <laughs> um, and... Uh, you know, uh, boys will be boys, but they shouldn't do it when they're men. Yeah. And uh, it was just a misjudgment uh, <laughs> on the part of uh, the head coach it and, was the my assistant fault. Yeah. and the assistants that they should know better. And, uh, you know, you don't build a program by tearing other people down. You build a program by building on success building on people and so you know I just wanted to call their attention to how we were going to do business <laughs> if All I right. saw that young man now I'd hug him in time I was sorry I mean it's it's one of those things that you know I learned I learned from that and I'm gonna say one other thing it just changed just a little bit something I learned from Dr. Spiker when I'm fortunate I talked to a couple of his assistants talked to other people and they said his style of leadership is he gets everybody on the same page and you understand what your job is then he gets out of your way and lets you do your job and that's the way I tried to pattern my staff after his style of leadership and they get us all on the same page and then give them all the responsibility and authority they can handle and I, I kind of got that from uh, Dean I like the way he did things and uh, I tried to transfer that into our program and 